Book One, When Thunder Roars. Chapter One, When Jennifer Hall Died. One. The horror which had plagued the city for years had left people scarred and afraid to step outside. Even the police patrolling the street brought little comfort, for as the hours grew darker, paranoia started to fill the city's hollow void. It was a Saturday evening on the 20th of May, 2006. Police cars were roaming the otherwise abandoned corners of cluttered artwork on the city walls. In fact, some areas felt so quiet the city seemed almost dead at times, with street lamps flickering from faulty wires as an eerie calm seeping through the cracks with every nasty vermin crawling about. Excavating like so rats tunneling through the pipes coming out of the sink would make anyone yearn for better days. The hazy red fumes and clouds of ash from the power plants made it nearly impossible for the sun to radiate any form of light. After four o'clock in the afternoon, making the night seem significantly darker, like a festering malignancy in the shadow of iron towers, and though nothing short of a whisper making its way through the concrete jungle one must always be weary of what lurks in the corner. As falling leaves brush over an old newspaper soaked in yesterday's rain covering parts of street corners, down to the newsstand selling comic books and papers with nothing all that exciting, a tall young woman of 18 with blonde hair, wearing a black leather skirt and a green top tie just above the belly makes her way down the block ignoring the occasional catcalling, and whistles from a gang of street thugs drinking and smoking while loud music screams out from your typical boombox. Hey boys, looky here. Check those legs. Hey check up. What say you and I get down in the back, huh? Bet you can't handle a real man if he took you up the ass? In your dreams, fuckboy! The woman replies, flipping them off as she passes the tipped over trash can next to a beaten down car stripped of its parts. Although she was a stand-up kind of girl with a can of pepper spray tucked in her purse and some knowledge of self-defense, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being followed. No doubt someone from the gang who did not like being offended decided to take manners into their own hands. The girl reached into her purse and hand locked on the pepper spray, hearing footsteps approaching. Every now and then, she would look over her shoulder, but not so much as to reach suspicion, but just enough to see the light fading from behind her and footsteps nearing at almost a snail's pace. Even during the summer, a gust of cold wind would make its way down the alley, a chilling tingle. But the sensation that something or someone was coming after continued all the way down to the second street, where she turned the corner, leaning up against the wall and grip tightening around the can. As the footsteps were coming closer, the girl was ready to engage, only for an old man to pass by with his hat tipped over his eyes and the cane making only the slightest sound. The girl lets out a sigh of relief. I must be losing it. She says to herself and continues down the path, occasionally checking her phone and riding back to chattering friends, notifying them that she would be out studying for the week. That ought to keep them off my back for a bit. She thinks. Uh. Shouldn't have had that last burrito. My stomach is all bloated. Now he'll know I ate before coming to our date. God damn. Does this street have no end? Feels like I've been walking for hours. Shit, Edward is gonna kill me. She was beginning to wonder if she was indeed being followed or if her mind was playing tricks on her, seeing how later a weird sensation. The kind you get when you're all by yourself, but the room feels a little more than empty, like a pair of eyes sending a chill down the spine as your body begins to quiver. Finally, after an hour, she crossed the sidewalk and went down to the park, the bright neon sign displaying Charlie's diner calmed her nerves and the sight of people brought a sense of relief, 